morning sports fans this is george with custom todd flies and guide service and this morning boys and girls we are going to be building one of these guys this is uh whitlock's fruit cocktail um we're going to be using a Kamikatsu B10S in a two. Uh, as you saw there, it's uh, it's got a weedless on it, so that's the first thing I'm going to show you. You want to start your thread. I'm using uh, Danville Flymaster uh, 210 Denier in yellow. I'm going to start your thread back about even with the point. Run your thread about halfway down the bend. And then for the uh, weed guard, I'm using uh, some stiff mono in a 30 pound test. I'm just going to put a hand whip on that. <clears throat> I'm going to take some head cement. Paint that up. And you're going to let that sit off to cure. And when it's done curing, it'll look like this. Tied back in. And then you got um, these are medium round rubber legs. You'll need them in yellow, green, orange, and black. I have a little ruler here on my bench. You want to measure that off at about four inches. And in order to keep the rubber legs from going everywhere and getting unruly, I just put them in a clip. You want to find the middle. Take a couple of wraps. You 
just a couple more, it looks like. So you lash them on them on the far side and then pull them over to you on the near side. And there's that. All right, next you're going to have some crystal flash. Crystal flash in orange and in chartreuse. Uh, you're going to pull four strands of each. Lay them both clumps together. Find the middle. And they go on essentially the same way. I'm going to put them on on the far side. And pull over to the near side. And stroke them back. Then you're going to trim them even with the legs or the, yeah, the rubber legs. Uh, all right. <clears throat> this is a uh, Whiting American saddle in yellow. And you're going to want to find four saddle hackles that they kind of get narrow you'll find four like that a lot of times you find them over towards the edge you don't want a wide one like this. See how wide that is? And curved. You don't want that. Nope. There we go. That's a good one. Match them up, and you're going to tie them in kind of deceiver style. <coughs> you want the shiny side towards you. You don't want these to be real long. They should essentially match up with the ends of the rubber legs. out there a couple of pinch wraps
I had to adjust the camera. You can just trim off that fluff. You can kind of wet the those little remnants down. All right, there's the yellows. Uh, now chartreuse. This is uh, uh, Metz Magnum Cape. And chartreuse. And you want four <clears throat> feathers off of it. And you want them to be about the same length is the yellows pinch wrap and they're tied in the same way with the shiny side towards the hook I know I said earlier towards you I meant Shiny side toward the hook. Again, you can wet those fibers. I didn't go according to plan. <laughs> And you're going to paint that. You want to let that sit off to the side so it soaks in there good. Okay, now that our uh, <clears throat> our tail end is uh, ready to be built upon, I'm going to tie back in. I'm going to use some, uh, just one of uh, hair, Hairlines products, Ice Dub Shimmer Fringe. Uh, it's about the same type of stuff as 
Um, <coughs> as um, William Flash same basic consistency so here's here's William Flash and here's uh, Shimmer Fringe about the same this shimmer fringe is a little easier to work with. So you just want to get yourself a little chunk. Trim that off. Kind of find the middle. Take a loose wrap and kind of spread that shimmer fringe around. You want it to go all the way around. Till it's kind of evenly distributed, spread out. Okay, then you take a securing wrap. So there's, there's my securing wrap. Then you're going to take this and you're going to push it back. And there we go. All right. Next, we got yellow. This is uh, deer belly hair dyed yellow. I use spring loaded scissors when I'm working with deer hair. Um, I'm pulling out the fuzz, the deer under fur, because that'll sink your stuff. Some folks will tell you you got to put this in a packer, in a hair stacker. I don't. I mean, it didn't really matter to me whether the tips are lined up or not, because I'm going to trim them off. All right, this first piece is kind of um, tricky to get on. Put that underneath and take another piece. Oh, back to the reason I use the uh, spring-loaded scissors. I get these for about 50 cents a pair at a surplus store up in Pennsylvania. These were $25. Deer hair is very coarse and will dull a good pair of scissors very quickly. So I'd just as soon not use my $25 scissors on deer hair. <clears throat> Stick that on top. Spread that around a little bit. And pinch the sides. And give it a downward pull.
And we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna do that again. Pinch the sides. Okay. I'm going to get my packer. I'm going to push that nice and tight. Okay, now from here you're going to want uh, a band of chartreuse, but it's not a real wide band. So you don't need a lot of hair. And this you're going to just let it spin around the hook. So take a loose wrap. And then you're going to give it a tug. And it'll turn right around the hook. Get your packer. Pack it in there. Okay, next is black. Again, it's a band, a little wider band. <clears throat> it's a little wider band than the chartreuse, but it's still just one band. Put it on there, take a loose wrap, take a loose wrap, and let it spin right around the hook. Give it a pack. Okay. Next is the rest of your head. That's your orange. You're going to want a pretty good clump. Loose wrap. Loose wrap, spin. Okay. 
pack. Drop the packer on the floor. <laughs> Loose wrap, loose wrap, spin. It's okay if some of the hair falls out, that happens. Pack. You just got to keep doing that until you get the rest of the head built. Loose wrap, loose wrap, spin. Pack. Loose wrap, loose wrap, spin. Pack. The tighter you get these packs, um, the easier it's going to be to get a good trim. Because when you go to push the razor blade across it, the hair is going to give. So you got to have something behind it to support it while you're trimming it. And that something is the ring of hair that you did as you were putting them on. So it's important to get them packed on there real well.
that's going to be about the end. You don't want to get the hair all the way up to the eye on this one because you got to bring the weed guard up through and you got to have something to mount it to. You want to be careful that you don't trap very many. If the goal is none at all of these hair fibers while you're trying to build the head. that a whip Put a drop of head cement on that thread. I'm going to let that sit and cure for a minute. <clears throat> okay. Um, while we're letting this... Uh, we can go ahead and start the trim. When I do my trims... I uh I take the fly out of the vise and before I trim it I uh I put steam to it so it flares the fibers out. Okay, so now we're gonna start the trim since I've steamed my head. Wanna Keep this uh, tail material out of the way. Push the head up, the back part of the head up, till you find the point of the hook. And then you just, this fly calls for a flat bottom. You want to try to trim this off as square as you can. The whole fly, I mean. And then you just round the... body. Trying to keep the size of the fly uniform, like the diameter of it.
Okay. <clears throat> now it's time to start giving it some shape. You want to taper from the green down into the tail. Then you stroke the hair fibers back forward <clears throat> and you want to get out any stragglers that you might have missed. This is where you start getting the rounded shape. Now, if you recall from kindergarten, one of the best ways to make a circle that has a uniform diameter and circumference is to start off with a square. And trim it down from there. <clears throat> and from a sculpting standpoint, See how that's square? From a sculpting standpoint, you just want to basically trim away everything that doesn't fit what you're looking for. There are some people that swear by the razor blade 
I like to trim with scissors. I know it takes a little longer, but I feel like I get a more accurate trim. To each their own. Some people leave it in the vise. I used to leave it in the vise to trim. I used to, but then uh, a client a long time ago ordered like four dozen muddler minnows, I think it was, and uh, I found it, it was a lot easier for me to take it out of the vise while I'm trimming. All right. Okay. So I got my bug mounted back in my uh, vise. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take some UV resin. Oh, excuse me. And I'm going to put it on the face. Because I want the face to be. Uh, solid and flat. Taking care not to get. UV resin. In the eye of my hook. And now that you got uh, kind of got to look at it from the side, well, from the front, you could take it back out of the vise, but uh, uh, okay. So we get that part done. I really should have taken it out of the vise because I gotta take it out of the vise anyway. Because I gotta bring my weed guard forward. You're just gonna take your weed guard and put it up through the eye. 
Now, oh, wait a minute. Get ahead of myself. You're going to tie back in. This is why you left the space behind the eye. And you're going to take your weed guard and you're going to put it up through. And then you want about an eighth of an inch of space between the point of the hook and uh just give me a second that might give you a little better view you want a, an, about an eighth of an inch of space between the point of the hook and the inside part of the mono and once you get it where you want it take a couple wraps check Take a couple more wraps. And then this part goes back down through the eye, which my, uh, I trimmed this earlier um, to keep it out of my way, and now I regret it. All right, I pulled that a little too tight. Uh, mono gets snipped off. Being careful not to crowd your eye. Take a couple more wraps. <clears throat> and get a whip finish on there. You see how that moving the uh, hair around kind of expose some unruly hair fibers. So you want to just kind of trim those off. Looks like I'm going to have to put some more UV on the, on the face. That's all right.
Okay, so um, next is going to be a new technique. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to end this one here, um, and when we come back for the next video, I'm going to show you how to do the legs on it. So, until later, uh, this is George with Custom Tide Flies and Guide Service, and this uh, has been the uh, Custom Tide uh, Whitlock to, uh, Fruit Cocktail. Uh, it's, obviously, it's a fire tiger pattern, and uh, this pattern... Puts all the colors that bass hate and strike all in one place. So, this is definitely a bass killer. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. If you want to see any more tutorials, please like and subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel. And uh, <clears throat> I got other flies available on my showcase website which is uh www.custom-tide.com that's c u s t o m dash t i e d dot com have a splash don't forget the dash <clears throat> you can also find uh my virtual fly shop on a Facebook by searching Custom Tire 02. That's C U S T O M T Y E R 02. Happy tying!